morning we're going to evaluate the error in Mongo import failure parsing JSON string near and there's usually a value. <clears throat> so one of the things to note about this is it's kind of like a, going to using SQL Server as an analogy here. It's kind of like bulk insert error, okay? And what it means is that there is some type of value in your JSON or multiple values, it could be, that Mongo import is not able to read, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and generate the error message, and then we will talk about the architecture uh, to handle it. Note that for students who are looking to automate this or looking for automated solutions, I do want to point out that I do cover that in my ETL course about how to automate this. For those of you who just want to understand what the failure means and you know what type of architecture you would need to design, I'll cover that here. So, of course, first it would be helpful if I passed in the actual names. There we go. Okay, so we generated the error message, and we will notice that, first of all, let's look at how to, to read this. You know, you see all these question marks, but you'll see here, failure parsing JSON string near, and we have, it actually provides where the error message, or sorry, where it started erroring out. Okay, very important to note. All right, so there are what this means essentially, and you can tell by looking at it. So from Mongo's perspective and how it's going to import and store these data, that's invalid. That's incorrect. Okay, so there's a couple of approaches here. The first approach is to pre-import from an architecture standpoint, pre-import, um, validate the JSON. This is kind of like, what would happen if you had a CSV file that, uh, from a bulk, imp bulk import perspective, that um, each delimited value wasn't supposed to be more than five characters, and there was one of them that was 500? You could do var car max for your table, but do you really want to do that now? So that's why. So you want to pre-validate your JSON. That's, that is a suggestion uh, to make. The other thing is to evaluate, the other architecture approach is to evaluate uh, the data because the format may actually be indicative of something else. In other words, maybe your entire approach is wrong. For instance, in this case, when we look at this error message, what we're really looking at here is a sub-document, not a document. So there's a couple of architecture approaches I could do. I could just validate the JSON. It's invalid from a document perspective, the way Mongo is seeing it. Or I could evaluate the data because it may be sub-documents, or another format of data, data, right? Then I would just adjust the data accordingly. If it's sub-document data, oh, okay, well now I can just create an automated wrapper around it and uh, build that automated wrapper. Okay, so that's what this error message means. It means there's invalid JSON. And uh, the two big architecture approaches that I would say would be, first of all, pre-validate it. And then the other thing too is if uh, if it fails on the pre-validation, we'll evaluate it. Is it a, is it sub-document based data? Yeah, I mean sub-document data are going to fail with Mongo or Mongo import, I should say, uh, because it's looking to store documents, not sub-documents. So you can you know either parse off the sub-documents or you can go ahead and and create a wrapper around those sub-documents, which I think is actually a, a more useful approach depending on what you're doing with the data.